Nate Kenyon, and Mickey Nielsen. If you are a fan of any of Blizzard's Expanded Universe stuff, you know these names very well. Last time I talked to Nate was when he wrote the pre-Diablo 3 novel The Order, and I interviewed Mickey when he wrote his Book of Cain. Now they are together right here to talk to us about the latest Diablo novel, Storm of Light. Now, as you are aware, I've been one of the most vocal critics of the Diablo 3 storyline, but I can say that those two books made the experience much, much better than just the story alone would have been otherwise. So, with that, I am very proud to welcome Nate and Mickey. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. So, before we get in depth with this book, I just, I just want to say, it might be my favorite novel in the Diablo Expanded Universe ever. Uh, uh-huh. Great news. It's, Love to hear it. It's fantastic. I can't, even, I can't even stress that enough. And I guess I'll talk about that when we get into the characters. But before any of that, Storm of Light is our first look into the world of Sanctuary since the end of Diablo 3. How have things changed, and I guess more importantly, how haven't they changed since last time we saw the world? Oh, since the last time we saw the world, geez, so there's been a lot going on. I mean, the the main thing is everything that happened with Leah and being the primeval and the uh, Black Soul Stone, right, and at the end of the cinematic, the Black Soul Stone, you, you know, you're left to wonder, okay, what became of it? And what you'll find out early on in Storm of Light is that the Black Soul Stone, it fell, and it actually fell into a, another realm of the High Heavens. So it didn't, it didn't fall down to... Earth, which some people kind of equate to sanctuary as if the high heavens are above and there's earth below, etc. Right. So when when the black soul stone fell, it was actually it stayed in uh, the high heavens. And so that's really where we come into the book is the black soul stone and the effect that it's having. It's starting to corrupt the high heavens and a lot, you know, all the rest of the angels are basically blind to that except for who realizes what's going on. So that's kind of our setup. And so the, the story revolves around that, the corrupting influence of the Black Soul Stone in the High Heavens, and Tyrael's plan on what to do about that. But um, despite the victory that was achieved, the war really isn't over. The angels are still pretty peeved about what took place. Uh, Sanctuary's pretty, it's still pretty ransacked. Like things, there's a little bit of normalcy, but there are demons still crawling around. So are we better off than where we were before? Did the player character have any real influence on the world? Because I feel like it seems as though the world is a standstill. Neither good or evil have won, but both are on the verge of of something. And I'm trying to figure out what your view of the world is at this point in time. Well, we... Oh, go ahead, Nick. Oh, I was going to say, Mick, you can correct me on this um, if I go off uh, completely wrong. But uh, one of the things I loved about the concept when we were talking about early on um, is that uh, there, as you, as you already alluded to, there are sort of packs of demons roaming, still roaming around, right? So to your question, I think it, it's sort of it's sort of anarchy down there to some extent in terms of there, there's not a lot of, of leadership anymore in terms of the, the, the burning hells on sanctuary. So, But there are packs of these leftover demons kind of ranging, uh, you know, out in the wastelands and other places. And, and I really loved that as a concept. Um, and I love the idea that we could use both sides, both the high heavens and, and, you know, the, the, the hells and others, um, uh, that to sort of use those, those packs, uh, to their advantage. I, I guess that, that might or may not answer your question, but I think that that was one of the things that really interested me early on in the book. Yeah. So the, the player definitely affected change, but as so often happens, there is another threat looming. And that's what we really start to explore in Storm of Light. We start to really get into who and what this new threat is, in addition to the Black Soul Stone itself and 
the corruptive influence it's having. So in order to uh, fend off this threat and stop the corruption of the Black Soul Stone, uh, you guys basically created the Diablo 3 Expanded Universe Avengers, is, is what this book is. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. That's uh, it's, uh, I, I said that it's something very similar um, to somebody earlier. It's exactly right. It, it, it that I think is the moment I was when I was reading through it, and I saw the I saw the back of the the book and the little description. I was like, oh look at this! I know some of these characters, and I started reading. I was like, holy crap! Like they aren't just cameos; they are legit main characters in this. And I immediately fell in love with the fact that this book is basically. The Diablo Avengers. You, Tyrael gets a group of, like, the best badasses there is and is like, I need your help. I need you to come do this. And it blew my mind because I was like, was this something that you guys had planned for a while to happen? Or was this sort of a last-minute thing? Like, what if we incorporate people from this book and this book and these comics? Like, how was that thought out? Uh, you know, I would love to be able to say that we planned that from the very <laughs> beginning. <laughs> I, I can't, though. I can't say that. Uh, so we we sat down early on. Nate, I, I forget, you know, how long ago you actually started the book. I know it was it was a while. Um, what? How long was it? Was it about a year? It's, yeah, it's been um, it's been a year since I started the draft. And so we were talking before that, though. So, um, yeah, it was it was over well over a year ago when we were kicking around concepts and stuff. So so it has been a while, but it was still pretty early uh, when you look at, you know, the development of the game and everything else. So we there were some things we knew for sure, and there were certain things that, that had not been decided yet. But we sat down and, you know, earlier on, I sat with uh, Metzen and Brian Kindrigan and, and uh, I think James Waugh and, and some other people. And we started figuring out, OK, well, what's, what's our story going to be? And we knew that we had the Black Soul Stone. We knew we wanted it to center around that. The more we talked about it, the more we thought it was very interesting that it's having this effect on the heavens. But then that they need to get rid of it. They need to get it out of there. And and it really became the story of what's going to happen to the Black Soul Stone to set up that early cinematic that you see uh, when Malthael comes in and and takes uh, the Soul Stone. So we, we started putting together the idea of, okay, well, what if it's kind of like a heist, you know? And then, and then if we did that and... It's kind of, it's, you know, Tyrael putting together another Herodrum, which we found very interesting as well, and going back to the humans once again, you know, to save the day, and, and figuring out who would those people be. And then we just, you know, then we had lots of fun just looking at, at fantastic characters that we've played around with before. Right. Uh, and and then, then, you know, we brought in Nate and we started really having those discussions and, uh, and it, you know, Nate, you can, you can talk about from your side there. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I love the, the concept was just was fantastic. And, um, and, and I think we all kind of, the, the whole Avengers idea, I think, you know, certainly hit me. Um, but I, I have to say, I was really, I was, I was nervous about taking on these, some of these iconic characters, you know, created by other writers and very, very well-known writers, people I respect. Um, and so, you know, I had to think, long and hard about it in particular you know a couple of the characters in particular um is whether i wanted to do that or not and uh and i finally thought geez we, we got to do this i mean it's just to, it's just to and if we're going to do it we got to do it we got to go all out we got to bring in you know the, the 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 ones the characters that people will remember the characters people know and love so um and once i once i kind of settled myself on that and i you know said um you know let's do this thing then it was it was uh, full bore ahead. It was a question that I had uh, about how you felt about writing characters that others had created, but I think you answered it pretty well. So I, I guess I would then ask, because it, it, it feels very Avengers-like, and I guess a little bit like Ocean's Eleven, like it is a heist-style uh, novel, the, the book expects readers to be up on the backstory of these characters. Uh, you get a little bit here and there, but if you didn't read, like, for example... Sword of Justice or or the Order, like you wouldn't get main plot points of these characters past. Things are given, but someone who's reading, um, I, I guess about Jacob for the first time would be like, "What? Wait, why does he have Tyrael's sword? What is what is going on here?" Like people, like there's a lot there. 
did was that a, a problem that you guys had? Did you figure readers would just get over it, or, or how did that thought process work? I think that's um, that's a common problem, not just with working with with other people's characters, but even your own. If you're doing any kind of series or sequels or anything like that, is there's always a balance, right? In in um, in between, you know, paying attention to 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 the uh, to doing the book itself justice, but also making sure that new readers are not completely lost. And it's the same thing here. You don't want to you don't want to kill momentum of the book by doing a bunch of info dumps of you know back back history and stuff like that. Um, so I I uh, you know did the best I could at layering things enough things in that you know folks who had never read any book before I hope will still have fun with the story. They don't need to know every single detail necessarily, I, I don't think, to enjoy it. Um, but the, the folks that have read, you know, all, all of the books before, before this one will really love it because they'll see all this stuff. They'll see the references. They'll, you know, hopefully the, some of them will make them smile and go, oh, yeah, you know, I remember that. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, so hopefully it works for both. Yeah, I think the, the Avengers analogy was a really good one. You know, you can you can watch that movie and get a lot out of it and, and really, you know, uh, be completely entertained um, if you haven't seen, you know, the other films that preceded it. So it's I'd say it's a similar kind of thing. Yeah, uh, The Avengers, for example, had the whole, like, uh, Tesseract where people are just like, if you don't know what that is, the movie was like, maybe you should go watch Thor Captain America, dummies. <laughs> right? It was like, get over it, just go do it. And it the book felt exactly like that. It felt like if you want to learn more, go read the other ones. We're going to keep moving on. Hey, that's and it was. I, I loved it. I thought it was great. Got to keep it moving. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So let's actually talk about some of those characters really quick. Can you maybe for I know there are probably a lot of people right now watching, listening who have no clue about these characters and are probably in the same boat as my father who went to go see the Avengers and was like, I didn't know what was going on, but I liked it. So I feel I. I feel like maybe we can talk about uh, the main characters really quick. Besides Tyrael, everyone, if you're into Diablo, you get who he is. But the, the, the ones from the expanded universe, from the books and the comics, who show up in this story as the main characters, can we really quickly just go into like each one of the personalities and uh, sort of what makes up our super team? Well, sure. I mean, I can tackle some of them. Mickey, if you want to jump in, too. Um, you know, Jacob, obviously, is 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 a haunted young man. He's had this the tragedies in his past. He's, you know, the death of his, the murder of his father by his own sword. And, um, and, you know, more importantly, I think more recently anyway, the, the fact that he was avatar of justice and wielded, um, Tyrael's sword for a period of time while Tyrael was, was reconstituting himself, um, and then lost it again. You know, now he's trying to figure out who he is, you know, and what his role is. So there's a lot of, um, self doubt and and um, struggles that he's going through, and then Shinar, who you know he has had a romantic relationship with, um, a, a wizard who um, you know of course they were together in the in the um, the Sword of Justice comics, and uh, Guinevere, who's the um, the barbarian, right, who was with them, um, and then Mikolov, who um, was a character in my book, The Order, my, the last book I wrote, uh, who. Himself is struggling. He's sort of been wandering sanctuary uh, since the events of the Order, trying to figure out um, what is coming next and what he needs to do to try to uh, help against the battle against uh, against the Burning Hells. Um, and of course, Zale. I mean, Zale is you know a character that I think anybody who's familiar with the universe knows and uh, and loves. And he's had his own. Um, struggles and losses and, and and things that he's got to figure out um but he's also he's he's had a calling of sorts he he senses there's a, a change in the in the balance and uh and needs to figure out what he needs to do um to uh to try to save sanctuary in the heavens so they're all in their own way i guess they've they've all been kind of they all they've all known that this is coming you know they've had this sense that this is coming um, and so Tyrael's appearance is surprising, but in another way, not, you know, they, they, they've had this idea that they are going to be called to something higher. I think, uh, just the one thing I would add, uh, just cause I feel like it's, uh, an interesting sidebar for, uh, for Jacob is that when we created Jacob's character for the sword of justice comic, uh, the original idea was that the comic would be a long-running series. And what we ended up doing was 
turning it into a graphic novel, but it was really the first part of his story. And then what was going to happen was, you know, for several issues, if we had done that, it would be the ongoing adventures of Jacob and Shinar and and I think uh, Genvir was was in there as well, and and we planned on you know keeping her there. But um, that would have ended with Jacob losing the sword. Like one day the sword is just not there anymore because Tyriel has has reappeared in the heavens, and and the sword you know was kind of called back to him. And uh, and then that was Jacob's journey from there was to figure out who am I now without that sword. And we always felt like that was a a very compelling uh, concept for a character. And then, of course, we didn't get a chance to do the entire series. And so then we just kind of jumped in with Nate and said, okay, so pretend that all of this happened (laughs) (laughs) and try to explain it to the reader as best you can as if it did happen as if we had you know 30 issues of this comic book behind us uh and good luck (laughs) and and nate did a great job with it he did absolutely fantastic yeah well i I gotta say i mean one of the things that i love so much about working with with blizzard and everybody there that that the support that they um, offer a writer like me. I mean, I'm not, um, on their, you know, on their team. I'm not there. I'm not on location. I'm not in the middle of this every day. And so to have, um, those kind of people able that where I'm able to bounce things off of and, and get the details when I need them and, um, and, you know, always have a, a a friendly response and a quick response is just, it's, you know, it's uh, invaluable for a process like this. So, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, that, that's definitely a challenge. But I, I always knew that I had they had my back, you know, so that's a great, a great feeling. Absolutely. I think uh, the character of Jacob then sort of uh, his struggle is the overall encompassing struggle of the entire book. Like every character or every group has that sort of where do I go from here? Who are we now? Is that sort of the theme of the book? Because you have, you know, Tyriel is trying to figure out who he is now that he is sort of i mean he's not really human or and he's not really an angel he's just sort of mortal and he has to deal with both of them our heroes are trying to figure out who they are and how they fit into this group the angiris council is trying to figure out what they do now with uh, two members at this point one is now mortal one is missing and the world in chaos and this black soulstone in their council chambers and there's just so much happening here and it all seems to be about finding out who you are. Yeah. I I mean, I think that's definitely a a main theme. I mean, you know, when, when Mickey first approached me with this project, I think one, one of the things he said was, was one of the things they really wanted to do was explore Tyrael's struggles with his new mortality and what that means um, to become mortal uh, after being an, an angel, an archangel. So uh, that was a, you know, that, that faith in himself, um, questioning himself, uh, you know, how do I survive in this world now that I have aches and pains and, you know, physical issues and problems and, you know, the things that we all have to deal with on a daily basis. Um, and, and how do you, how do you, how do you go from being a, a god, you know, to, to a mortal? Um, and I think that, that theme kind of, I think you put your finger on, I mean, that really sort of bled into all of the characters and all their character arcs. And I think Jacob ended up for me anyway, being, um, you know, one of the, if not, if not the lead, you know, one a in the book, um, in terms of his character arc and his struggle to find himself and redeem himself. Yeah. To me, it's, it's really about Tyrael and Jacob, the two Mm -hmm. of them. I think they kind of make up the, the backbone of the entire thing and, and their struggles are very similar in, in each, reflects the other which i think is great yeah one of the things i like to i love to play with in that was you know i think early on Tyriel is trying to um inspire jacob to greatness and to come into himself and realize that he is a leader with or without the sword um but also by the end you know he's sort of inspiring Tyriel to to fight and to become more than who he believes he is at that point so yep uh, I like that. I like that kind of mirror image. Yep, absolutely. So I'll, I'll I'll leave you guys with this one last question that I'm I'm very curious about, just to see where the where we're going in the future. Without giving too much away, 
is this the last time we'll see a super group like this together in a novel or comic or something coming down the pipeline for either post Reaper of Souls Diablo or any other franchises? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Uh, Nate, you want to answer that one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, uh, I've already got four or five plotted. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I hope not. I would love to see more uh, more team ups, you know, happen in yeah. the future. We we had uh, such a great time. I mean, it was it was just a lot of fun, and you know, representing humans going into the high heavens and what that must be like. I mean, that was just really, really interesting. And that took us some tweaking to really kind of figure out, you know, what what would that experience be like if you're you're a human being going up into the high heavens and walking around and just the what you're seeing and what you're hearing and what you're feeling and everything else. Uh, so that was that was a, a wonderful and fun challenge, and uh, and Nate did a, a fantastic job of, of representing that. So it's it's a lot of fun. I would love to see more more uh, more groups, you know, getting together, especially all these heavy hitters, and and there's going to be uh, more characters introduced in the fiction. Uh, Morbid, I think we yeah we've we've talked about Morbid a little bit. Um, but he's coming up. He's going to have a story built around him, and of course, you know, there's going to be uh, all the characters that uh, that people are going to see in the expansion. Well, with that said, I look forward to whatever you guys come up with in the future. I'm very excited, and I just want to say once again, thank you, gentlemen, for taking the time to talk with me. As always, it is a bunch of fun. Absolutely, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Advertise like shameless whores. <laughs>